All right, in this video, we're going to be finishing up unit three, and we're going to be talking about this idea of fitness, fitness in the evolutionary sense. And so um, what we know about this idea of fitness, fitness is just an organism's ability to survive, and we know that variation can create fitness or increase fitness. Variation can be evidence on, evident on the uh, physical level, like these birds having different shaped beaks, but a lot of times it's evident on the cellular and molecular level and has just as much impact. Uh, it can be differences in molecular structure and molecular types, or it can be difference in the number of different molecules that are present as well. And so we've been talking about uh, this, this idea of cellular energetics in this unit, and so it's important to note that there are different different levels of fitness that can create um, some issues for animals here. Uh, an individual fitness refers to, again, an organism's ability to survive. I have cheetahs here because cheetahs are at low fitness right now because they are unable to keep prey. They can chase down prey and kill it, but they can't keep a lion from taking it from them. And so this has created an interesting dilemma for cheetahs that will have to, they'll have to adapt or they will go extinct. Um, individual fitness like this particular cheetah, does contribute to the overall fitness of a species. Not every individual within a species needs to show fitness for that species to survive. We see that with our own species. We see that with other species as well. Not, not all are able to survive at the same level as the other. And so uh, the more variation actually within a particular species, the better chance that species will demonstrate fitness as a whole from generation to generation and will be able to change under different environmental pressures. One example of this is chlorophyll molecules. Chlorophyll is a molecule within plants. We've talked about chlorophyll. And look at all the different kinds of chlorophyll that are available. These um, different kinds of chlorophyll can capture different kinds of light at different wavelengths. And this greater flexibility allows plants to absorb all the different kinds of light as opposed to just one specific wavelength of light. Different times of year, different times of day, you're going to see different sorts of light. And so plants that have more of this are better equipped to deal with more variation in environment as opposed to a plant that only likes a specific thing. Something similar with animals in cell membrane cholesterol. Animal cells contain cholesterol while plant cells do not, and cholesterol helps the, the membrane to maintain fluidity during adverse temperatures and, and different, you know, during high temperatures, it's able to stabilize the membrane structure uh, and it's able to maintain fluidity at low temperatures as opposed to freezing. And so the proper, um, proper amount of cholesterol in the membrane is crucial for homeostasis. And so different organisms then are, you're going to see different amounts of cholesterol, and this is going to create different levels of fitness. Um, cholesterol can also decrease the water penetration. Um, so unlike, you know, unlike plant cells, um, animal cells have they don't have a cell wall. And so water can actually be dangerous to animal cells. And so this cholesterol can increase um, or decrease the amount of water diffusion that happens in cell because cholesterol, as you can see, is a, is a steroid. And so it is a lipid, which is nonpolar, and it doesn't allow water to, de to diffuse across the membrane. Some organisms are going to want more water and some are going to want less, depending on the environment that they live in. And then lastly is the hemoglobin molecule, which is a protein. Hemoglobin is a protein that carries oxygen in the blood. It contains iron, and that iron binds to the oxygen and is able to carry it through the blood. There are two types of hemoglobin found in humans. There is adult hemoglobin and fetal hemoglobin. Fetal hemoglobin is also called hemoglobin F, and it enables efficient uh, transport of oxygen from the blood from the mother to the developing fetus. Uh, it's more attractive to oxygen. It actually attracts oxygen better than adult hemoglobin, and so it's going to pull oxygen away from hemoglobin A. And so it, in a sense, it almost parasitizes uh, the mother's blood. It's a way to think about it so that it can get more oxygen so that it can develop faster. 
uh, hemoglobin A is able to uh, bind to oxygen that is brought in of the lungs by adults and aid in that oxygen delivery. But for a, fet- for a fetus, a developing fetus, the oxygen is taken from fluid. And so it has to have a greater affinity in o- for oxygen in order to work.